Okay, so today we're going to go ahead. We finally got all of our parts in for this modification to the Excalibur 2 battery compartment. And we're doing, as you've heard before, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, power button modification to this that I've come up with. And we're going to see how this works out. I had a uh, machined, I actually uh, did a 3D image on this actual part right here, which is Delrin plastic. It came out pretty good. You can see maybe if I hold it up just right to the light, you can see that this flat edge here, right, and the inside diameter has been abrased. Uh, anyway, I also did the same thing on this piece of plastic, which is going to mount up to. Took the sandpaper and got that. So we've got our piezo electric push button. This is amazing for this application. Should work out really well. The button, I have no problems uh, with this at all. I think it's a really good solution. It's been used in some dive lights, actually and they've gone down at depth with tech divers is very deep it's aluminum housing on the outside and just a little bit of pressure is going to make that piezo electric element on the inside just enough to send a signal to trigger our circuit so we can turn the battery power on and off of our metal detector as we've mentioned earlier so we're going to go ahead and fit that in there got a jam nut that we're going to slip over this we're going to go ahead and lock this down so this is not moving it's very secure very tight and it's going to get locked in and filled with the potting compound is going to be in there as well there's some exposed threads in there and it's going to lock the potting compound is going to lock that it's not going to come loose or come off at any point i couldn't imagine that happening so now that we have it at this point let's do a quick test fit we've already nothing really too critical on this fit. Here's the big point about this project and why it took a little while to get all this together. Number one, I wanted this machine piece here, but right here, I'm gonna share something with you guys. I wanna make a big shout out, a big call out to Bondit. They're an adhesive company out of California. B-O-N-D-I-T, Bondit. And this is the B4682, and this is the B4682TH. The TH is more of an adhesive. It's going to have a little bit more of a grip to it, where the non-TH version of this specific formula is more of a potting compound, so maybe a little bit more rubberized, but it's basically like the bottom of what they did in this switch here, where they covered it for water, uh, so the water and stuff could get in there. That's a potting compound that they filled that cavity with, and it's a sealant, basically. So, big shout out to Bondit. Thanks a lot for supporting this application, this video, and this test to see if this is going to be uh, a winner. Um, this is still kind of like a big test. I haven't... Um, my biggest issue that you probably realize as soon as it's called out, and some of my friends and people out there that are more into the uh, manufacturing and machining of things would understand. If we look here, this is my kind of my issue. We've got two flat surfaces right here and we're going to join them together and have this adhesive hopefully be strong enough to hold it on there. This is what we call a butt joint. There's um, The reality is, is if we would have machined the outside of this down a little bit so this had like a little bump out kind of like the top of a Lego part and it kind of went on to the inside diameter of this and it gave it just a, a real good fixation even without the glue it might last a lot longer, survive a lot better. So this is still kind of up in the air. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping the glue is well enough. This is going to be on the outside of the metal detector, and we're going to be diving with it. I'm going to be pretty cautious with it, but sometimes the part could get bumped. So we hope it survives and lasts. Two-part application. I want to be real clear of what, why we have two, the two adhesives. So my first thing is, is we're going to hook up the TH, and we're going to run the TH along the inside diameter and we're gonna get up to probably about on the inside of this part, maybe up into this area here, so we get a lot of surface area coverage and around this outside edge. Then we're gonna go ahead and pick up the non-TH, which is more the potting compound, and we're gonna fill the cavity on the inside and bring it up to almost kind of level to the top. Then once that's done, we'll, stick the, uh, we'll probably take the bottom part of this and I'll probably put the TH around this part here so it gets all the way around this surface here really well and then I'll put the wire through poke it through and see how that comes together then the if we need to we can take the 
the um, potting compound version of this and try to finish off and put whatever we need to down here where the wires are and get out and fill any void that might be in there. As long as that hole gets completely saturated with the uh, potting compound, we'll have a nice watertight seal and we won't have any water ingress issues to worry about. So one important thing to do if you're going to do anything like this and you're doing a pretty much a permanent fixation and you got yourself a accessory, a button or something electronic and you, you need to do your final test before you start with your adhesive. We got to go hooked up here to the meter and just a little test. And that is of course working as intended. Just always good to make that final last check. This is the last opportunity. So now that we know that our button is working as intended we can go ahead and get our adhesive two-part adhesives prepped and ready and we can get on with this and uh, get it hooked up so we're going ahead we have uh, got our two-part epoxy cartridges prepped here we're going to go ahead and bleed this guy this is the fun part we're going to go ahead and start applying this to the inside By the way, this is the first time I've actually used this adhesive two-part epoxy from Bondit. I actually consulted with them quite a bit to find out exactly what they thought. They have a lot of different formulas of their glue and for the application that we're using it for, we discussed it and their engineers and their front desk, the uh, people that respond to you over phone and email are definitely well informed on their product line. They are amazing. And I highly suggest if you've got any um, Delrin bonding applications that you get in touch with these guys, they definitely know what they're doing from a chemical bonding company perspective and they're very helpful. And I'm sure they've worked with a lot of the big, huge companies and they're actually willing to work with anyone that's interested in their product line. So that's very encouraging. And I wanna send out a big shout out to those guys. I've got the inside of this now pretty well saturated with this glue. Set him right here. We're gonna go ahead and put our potting compound in. With it just flat here on the table, you guys can kind of see from a distance there what I'm up to. And this one here is much more liquid. It's flowing very quickly. It's going up the mixing nozzle, so that's kind of as we would expect. And now we're going to fill the inside of this cavity and it is just running in there as if it was the consistency of um, after you bring the honey out of the microwave. It's actually very easy to apply this, which I'm very encouraged. And we're going to go ahead and treat the Adhesive coming now. We're gonna gonna try to get as much of this TH on the outside of this. I want this to be a real good using as much surface area as I can with this TH adhesive to get a real firm lock on this part. I've already mentioned my concerns. It's a big concern. So I want to get as much mechanical adhesion on this project as possible. And we'll see how it goes. And if things turn out, then we might have a decent solution here. We're going to pull the, go back to the potting compound and give it a couple of, just a few more pumps in the middle there. Bring that up to the level that we want. And hopefully we don't overdo it and have a really mess. It's 360 circles, so we're not completely concerned on the... There we go. Oh my goodness. There we go, guys. We got it on there. So now we're going to finalize the positioning of this. 
we can take this all the way down and hopefully get it inside there. So there we go guys. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We're going to tape it up. We're going to let it rest and we'll bring you guys back in and we'll do a live test on this. We have here is a piezoelectric switch and we have a, a control board here. This is a piezoelectric crystal. Basically whenever it gets flexed or bent, it actually send, it generates a little bit of a voltage and that voltage can get translated because we need a flip-flop circuit because you want to be able to, with that pulse, um, it's a real small pulse. Each time you push it, it's not constantly, it's not push it once, constantly on, constantly off. So that's what this little circuit board here, this is a um, push button circuit by Adafruit Technologies. I was actually going to design my own. This and uh, Lady Ada, the owner of that company, I believe they're in New York. She's amazing electrical engineer and they've got all their own in-house pick and place surface metal electronic circuit board production facility going on. And she actually generated this board and manufactured it a few years ago and it's for sale in her store online if you go to adafruit.com and this is an amazing little board. Just pressure. It's not inductive like your cell phone, which is really cool. It's pressure. It's a piezoelectric crystal underneath this aluminum housing. This switch, by the way, has been proven for military use. It's been proven in uh, marine environments. It's been proven at depth. It is corrosion, uh, darn near corrosion proof almost, but it's very uh, corrosion resistant. It's it's made to be actually in marine equipment and. Uh, harsh environments. The LED is bright enough and this plastic is great. I can see it so when I turn on the expectation right now is there's no LED light on. You don't see any LED light so we don't expect this to come on and it's not going to come on. I'm going to run it up there a little bit so when we turn it on we should hear something. And we do. Off. It's off. On. Off. If you've lost your ring or special item of value, please get in touch with me at the SeattleRingHunter.com as soon as possible so I can arrange to do a search for you.